Now, if you had four or five hours, I would introduce each one of you and have you tell us how she affected you. <laughs> but we're not going to do that. You will have an occasion or a little time later on to come and tell us a little humorous story or something about Adley. Adley loves stories. You could tell Adley a story and she'd just laugh her head off at it. It was wonderful. A few years ago, Adley's doctors in Oakland had been collaborating with her doctors, with doctors in San Francisco, and they had arranged for us to have an appointment at UCSF. I was so anxious for this appointment, engaged plenty of time to be there early. Not only did I grossly underestimate the commute traffic, but there was an accident, and so we sat and sat and sat in the car on the bridge for what became a two hour and 15 minute drive to UCSF. I was very worried that our appointment would be canceled, but my much bigger concern at this point at this point was the fact that I'd have to go to the bathroom really, really, really badly for the past two hours. Truly the worst ever. I was squirming and bouncing in my seat. When we, when we finally arrived at the UCSF campus, I realized it would be at least another five to ten minute walk with Adley before I'd see a restroom. And not only that, I was afraid I couldn't even safely stand up at this point. <laughs> I grabbed my big, huge, empty coffee mug, <laughs> and the problem was finally solved right there in the driver's seat of the parking lot. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> I'll never forget Adler's expression of shock and amusement, mostly amusement. I quickly said to her, Let's just keep this to ourselves. <laughs> Adley was known for firing one-liners, and I could just see her saying to these doctors that we'd never met before. <laughs> My mom just peed in her coffee mug. <laughs> Once inside the building and walking to the clinic, Adley asked me, Mom, did you lock the car? I told her I wasn't sure, but it was okay. Wouldn't it be really funny if someone stole the car and took a sip of your coffee? <laughs> Having never used my coffee mug for anything other than coffee, and my focus being sharp on hurrying, I had meticulously, out of habit, screwed the cap back on the coffee mug and placed it right back in the cup holder. <laughs> On our drive home, she asked me, can I just tell Kayla and Mila about this? Can I just tell Kayla and Mila about this? Toying with Adley, I said, it's not that I mind them knowing, but how can we trust them that they won't tell anybody? Yeah, she said, don't worry, I won't tell anyone. I'll just tell everyone at your funeral. <laughs> first preschool teacher said to me, I've been doing this for 35 years and I have never met a more precise individual. I initially took that to be her polite way of saying that she was inflexible, but as it turned out, she really was just that precise. When she was turning four, I happened to be talking to my dad on the phone. He, I handed the phone to Adley because it was her birthday in a couple of days. I could hear my dad say, somebody has a birthday this week, happy birthday. Cold silence and a pursed stare from Adley. So my dad repeated it, happy birthday. Still silence. I was whispering to Adley, just say thank you, say thank you. But instead, she loudly said, it's not my birthday. <laughs> what? I said, for me again, and Abby again, today is not my birthday. 
I ended their rude, her rude conversation as quickly as I could, and I tried to explain to Atlee that it was a perfectly normal and acceptable thing to do to wish people happy birthday on either side by a few days of their birthday. But she wouldn't have it. Her response was, why would you do that? <laughs> The next year, I was planning a birthday and had scheduled it for a Friday afternoon. My birthday is on Wednesday. Oh my gosh, here we go again. I decided I wouldn't waste my breath this time. Mom, if my party is on Friday, then all the kids will think that my birthday is Friday. <laughs> Trust me, Adley, they won't care, <laughs> only you. <laughs> And it wasn't just birthdays, it was everything in between. She would never deviate and held us all accountable to her accuracies. Not long ago, I was considering repainting the exterior of our house. Every time I passed a particular house on the high school carpool, I passed this house that was the perfect color. For months, I intended to knock on the door to inquire about it. When I finally did, and the door opened, I completely recognized the face, but given that we were out of context, it took me a few seconds to realize how I knew this person. She was in sweats and a baseball cap, and I was actually dressed for a change, and it was usually the other way around when we would see each other. She looked stunned, her eyes were big, and she immediately started saying, Oh my God, how's Adley? How's Adley? What's wrong? She grabbed her, her cell phone. She's like, I don't have any text from you. I don't have any text. What's wrong? And as she was saying this, I had simultaneously realized who it was, which made me think, oh my God, oh my God, she thinks I'm stalking her. She thinks I'm stalking her. It was Adley's pediatrician. I was saying, no, 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 it's not Adley. Everything's okay, really. That's fine, but I was really horrified that she was thinking that I was at her front door because of that crisis. Even I wouldn't go that far. It was pretty hilarious when we both calmed down and I was like, so why are you here? I like the color of your house. It was so funny, I couldn't wait to go to get home and tell the story to Adley. When I finished, Adley had the most unimpressed expression on her face. So? <laughs> what do you mean, so, I said. Don't you think this is a crazy coincidence? I mean, what are the odds? <coughs> Mom, we live in Lafayette. <laughs> you knocked on one door. I only have one doctor in Lafayette. If you go knocking on doors in Oakland and San Francisco, I bet all my doctors will be answering the doors. <laughs> she shook her head and rolled her eyes as though I was completely clueless. And that was the athlete we contended with every day. Adley's favorite part of the day was the dinner table. This setting here actually reminds me of our round dinner table at home and how much she enjoyed not only the food, but listening and participating in everybody's sharing about their day. She was the ultimate critic of both food and people and had no shame. Every day of her life involved some form of health care. One night, Mila had a friend over to dinner for the first time. As soon as we all sat down, Adley enthusiastically began discussing her kidney stones. <laughs> Mila's head went down, and she embarrassedly said to her friend, this is what our family talks about at the dinner table. What does your family talk about? <laughs> but no matter the subject, always, Adley always made us laugh really hard. When Adley was offered to make a wish through the Make-A-Wish Foundation, her first wish was to go to Japan and eat sushi at all the top Japanese restaurants. <laughs> Everyone that knew Adley knew how much Adley loved sushi. Sashimi the most, raw fish dipped in soy sauce. She would eat it for breakfast and couldn't get enough of it. 
one time just she and I went to a sushi restaurant for dinner and the older couple sitting next to us were so entertained with her extreme embellishment and joy of her meal that when we asked for the check, we were told the couple next to us had bought our dinner. Her second wish was to go to London to an Adele concert with Little Prince George. <laughs> Adley loved music and had taken an interest in the royal family for a period. <laughs> Given Adley's medical record, it was not advisable to travel internationally, so her third wish was to meet the real Moana in Hawaii. When her doctor had to sign off on the paperwork, I don't see her, I'm thinking she's here, but <laughs> um, I got a phone call. Paige? She has a line now. Are you sure it's a good idea to go somewhere where there's water everywhere? Won't that be hard on her? No, I said. We have a pool. She's used to it. All she really cares about is me, to meet Moana. She's fine around water. So her doctor reluctantly signed off. Thanks to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, we had an incredible experience from beginning to end. It really was life-altering. Adley had been used to a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention throughout her life, but it was typically tied to her weaknesses. The abundance of attention that Adley and her sisters received on this trip was all positive attention. It was the first time that I saw her stop worrying about her diseases or trying to manage her health. She didn't have a care in the world. This made me a bit euphoric, and apparently I stopped having a care in the world too. Because I was wrong, her doctor was right, Adley really, really wanted to go in the pool in the ocean. And I just couldn't say no when I saw her enjoying life so much. Oh, Adley had refused to use the plastic medical patches that were made to cover your lines when you bathed. So we had devised our own solution using the saran wrap. So I wrapped her up in a lot of saran wrap with a lot of tape and in she went. The only thing that got her out of the water for the rest of the trip were meals. By all appearances, she had the most fun of anyone else on the island, as did Kale, Mark, Mila, and I. When the trip ended and we got home, I wanted to keep Adley's carefree, worry-free momentum going. So I stocked up on saran wrap and continued to allow her to enjoy the pool and water, so much so that I couldn't keep up. I got asked more than once last summer, why do you keep your saran wrap in the bathroom? <laughs> As her many medical es escapades began to accumulate, I told Adley we could make a movie about her life. She told me there would be no one short or rare enough to play her. And besides, aren't the books usually better than the movies? So we agreed it would be a book, and every time she encountered a new challenge, we just said we had a new chapter to add. In fact, Adley gave us a decade-long chapter of her life. During that decade, she taught our family many things. To handle her needs and limitations, we needed an open calendar, which meant fewer commitments and more time altogether at home. And thus, we thrived on just our conversations. Along with an open calendar, we also needed to live spontaneously, always. True spontaneity doesn't allow time for any expectations. It's common knowledge that having low expectations is a good approach, and I can attest that having none at all always resulted in us having a great time. Last summer, two sets of our good friends were gonna be in Cape Cod and invited us to join them over 4th of July. It was July 1st. Adley was doing well, and I'd always heard great things about Boston Children's Hospital, just in case. So we booked our tickets at midnight, and were packed and ready to go a day and a half later. 
Before we even left our house, we started getting text updates from the, from the airline changing, canceling, rechanging our flight time. Our flight there could not have been any more botched. We ended up with layovers in a couple of different cities before we ended up in Baltimore, which was still not our final destination. It was about 3.30 a.m. and they rescheduled us for another flight that would be hours, late, hours later. I told everyone to pick a spot for all of us to lie down on the floor and get some sleep. Everyone on that flight, not just us, <laughs> but everyone on that flight was very tired, hungry, and cranky. One of my older kids, thinking she was kicking her sister, instead kicked the stranger next to her really <laughs> hard. I was losing my patience. When all was settled and when all was settled, I squeezed down into my spot on the floor next to Adley. Our noses were only a couple of inches apart. We were staring at each other. As I started to spread my sweatshirt as a blanket, this triggered me and I started giggling. Then Adley started giggling. Then we both started laughing. Harder and harder, more and more. We were both slap happy and had the infectious giggles that only get worse the more you try to stop. The kind that make your eyes tear and your stomach hurt from laughing so hard. We couldn't stop. And I know that we were both pretty much thinking the same thing. Using my sweatshirt as a blanket made me think of the numerous times she and I had been in the ER, drained at all hours of the night with those dreaded hospital blankets waiting for her room. I really don't remember which one of us was able to stop laughing first and speak, but we were both saying, what's that big deal? Why is everyone so upset? We're on vacation. What's wrong with you people? There really wasn't anything that could inconvenience Adley by this point. She was always put through the ringer. We went on to have the time of our lives, and Adley, just like everybody else, played endlessly in the ocean. We went through a lot of saran wrap on that great vacation, too. Adley loved stories, but not fiction. They had to be real stories about real people. Not surprisingly, she was often drawn to stories about people with real challenges and struggles. When she was learning about Martin Luther King at school, she was very interested in his life. One night I was putting her to bed and I ended up telling her a personal story of mine about race. The next night, she asked me to tell her another real story, random, anything, anything funny that came to mind from my childhood. This became a nightly bedtime ritual at home. Not in the hospital, thank God, because this went on for a couple of years and I truly, truly ran out of personal stories. She wouldn't allow me to recycle any. It got to the point where I had to start telling her the stories from high school and college that you never, never thought you would tell your kids. <laughs> I was always relieved when we had company over so I could send them into her room to cover for me. Adley had her own favorite story about herself and loved to tell it to everyone. Throughout her entire life, she had numerous procedures that required her to go under anesthesia. I stopped counting after 26 times, but I know there were more. Every single time, she had an adverse reaction to the various anesthesia drugs. We tried them all but she came out flailing and screaming at the top of her lungs every single time for at least 48 minutes, to be precise. I really did time it because I could hardly bear it until the drugs wore off and she was done. It really was awful. You could hear her from outside and way down the hallways. I always felt badly for all the other kids in the recovery room who were all calm and silent. And I was so envious of their parents. Even though I knew it was drug-induced and would end, I would still try everything to calm her. Despite all of the experiences, I never stopped trying it. But then there was the time, 
and I don't remember exactly when it was, but towards the latter end of the count. We were at it again, and this time, uh, it was about 20 minutes into the 48. All of a sudden, my phone rang in my purse. I went to silence the ringer, and it was Layla on FaceTime. I said, Adley, Adley, it's Layla, it's Layla. Do you want to talk to her? She wants to talk to Layla? Just like that, Adley stopped, sat up, wiped her tears, and talked to Layla. It really was astonishing to everyone in the vicinity. Seriously, as Adley would say, all my episodes of heartache and headache and all it took was a phone call from Layla? Adley told this story over and over again. We've always said in our house that everyone needs a Layla. How many eight-year-olds can identify a petechia on their friend's face during a play date? If you don't know what that means, it really tells you how amazing Layla and Adley's relationship was. My favorite, one of my favorite Adley stories is that Adley always wanted to see real rainbows, but usually couldn't because of her vision. Many years ago, when the kids were much younger, we were on a drive and there was a very vibrant rainbow we all thought maybe she could see. While I was driving, Kale wanted me to open the sunroof so she could hoist Adley out of the top of the car, and Mila kept telling me fiercely, Mom, drive closer, drive closer, just keep driving closer, turn down that road. Her sister so badly wanted her to see the rainbow. Ironically, a couple of years ago in the hospital, Adley was playing a song on her iPad. I was on my laptop working and wasn't paying much attention. But shortly in the song, I burst into tears. I had to leave the room, I was a mess. But I was also laughing at myself. I didn't recall any song ever moving me to tears so quickly and intensely. The next day she played the song again, and I had the exact same instant reaction as the two before. So this time I was curious to know what this song was that had this power over me. I asked her to Google the lyrics, and sure enough, every word seemed as though it was written just for Adley. The lyrics were my feelings to a T. So I actually then asked her to play it again for me, and I let my tears flow freely. Adley could not even remotely understand how this song could have any effect on me whatsoever. She was very humored by the fact that any time the first chord would play, I was instantly gone in a river of tears and had to get out of earshot. She thought it was absolutely hilarious, so she turned it into a game. She'd hide her iPad under the covers, and when a nurse or school teacher would come in the room, she'd mischievously say, do you want to see my mom cry? <laughs> she loved to randomly mess with me or chase me out of the room by playing it. It made her laugh so hard. Go figure, the song is called Rainbow. As medicine is not an exact science and that we only stood for precision, there was always a crux of trust. So she really took it upon herself to manage all the facets of her complicated health care. She didn't just insist, she fought for things to be done her way. And watch out if they weren't. I felt so badly for many a nurse. She was always checking for errors. For her 10th birthday, she asked for a lie detector kit just so she could double check that her sisters or doctors weren't lying to her. <laughs> You could say Adley knew no different way of living, but she did know that she was different. Recently, she very nonchalantly said to me, Mom, every time I go anywhere where people have never seen me before, they stare at me. And yet she was never disturbed or deterred by her appearance in any way. The only place her differences bothered her was at school. I think because she was absent so often and couldn't keep up with her peers on many different levels. Interestingly though, 
when, class, when her classmates came to visit her at the hospital during her bone marrow transplant, she was the more festive athlete I knew. I realized the hospital was her place where she dominated and felt more comfortable. Adley could not have been any more fortunate with the extraordinary care and support she received from everyone, from her dearest friends to her doctors and nurses, including the home nurses, all who gave extra time to her, whether it was on shift, off shift, or weekends. Her classmates at school could not have been any sweeter or kinder or more welcoming to her. And all of her school teachers and staff could not have been any more accommodating, caring, and helpful. And it didn't stop there. I could tell story after story of random acts of kindness that they received from total strangers, literally on the streets while we were out and about. It really was beautiful and it never ended. But most of all, she was lucky to have her family, especially her sisters, Kale and Mila, who were actively involved every day in helping her and caring for her. And yet not once did I ever hear either of them utter a single word about it. They just did it. Kale often used inspiration from Adley in her school assignments, which really lifted Adley. And Mila literally physically carried her anywhere she needed to go. All of our lives weren't very impacted by Adley. During her most difficult times, when she asked me tough questions about her problems that I couldn't offer any solutions to, they were also my most difficult times. I had to tell her that I didn't have answers, but I promised her that I would never stop doing everything in my power to make things better. And this was always acceptable enough to her to get her through anything. I had the opportunity, which I now consider a luxury, several times during the past eight years to tell her that she was the bravest person I knew and would ever know, and that I was sorry that it had to be through her difficult challenges, but that she taught me lessons that I never would have learned any other way And that these lessons made my life better and were the absolute greatest gift anyone could ever give. And I thanked her and I told her how grateful I was. Our bond was intimate. We hugged and held on to each other a lot. There wasn't a conversation we didn't have. Every night, as though it was one word, she said, good night, I love you. Stories, I always think about what memories stick out and have good meaning to them. So I tried to think of some memories that I could share, but couldn't. One thing I did remember is the characters Abby played in all my stories. In my stories, Abby always played the trickster. Throughout our journeys, Abby provided comic relief and was also my sidekick. In general, Abby and I shared a very loud and careless sense of humor, and my most priceless memories are the ones of us laughing, dancing, and singing together. It was my favorite thing to blast music in the kitchen and sing with Adley, a fun activity that would often happen immediately after dinner at our house. Yes, dinner time where you sit at a big table with your family and eat your meals in a nice and appropriate fashion. I would proudly say that my family's dinners are not like anything like yours. <laughs> dinner is my favorite part of the day. After a day of school, when I come home and be doing homework or sitting on my phone in my room, it always made me excited to have Adley and Mila knocking on my door telling me dinner is ready. Watching Adley indulge in her meals was so entertaining. She would stuff herself with food she didn't even know without hesitation and love every bite. The conversations that we had at dinner are what excited me most, but it also depended on the mood Adley was in. If she was in a bad mood, dinner was going to be miserable, yet somewhat humorous. But most of the time, Abby was in a good mood, because I'm pretty sure dinner was her favorite part of the day, too. 
Adley tended to have lots of energy at the dinner table, which amped up her volume and sassy attitude. What made Adley so sassy is that she was always so observant of how people around her did things, so she was always on the ball to critique what people were saying or doing wrong. At the dinner table on weekdays, my mom always talks through our schedule for the following day and what commitments we have and what not. Whenever something in the schedule didn't sound right, Adley immediately let my mom know she had it all wrong. Another thing Adley did during dinner time, which I thought was actually quite impressive, is being able to brag about her, brag about her near-death experiences and making our own injuries a competition. <laughs> One of her most recent quotes, when all of us at the table happened to be complaining about a vein toe, root canal, and stuffy nose, and Adley said, Guys, I have a disease every day, so bam. <laughs> Our dinners didn't end until someone got up from the table, and normally the first person to leave the table was me in need of a dance break. Adley always had different obsessions with different music artists, from the time she was super little when she loved Maroon 5, Adele, then Shawn Mendes, Ariana Grande, and every soundtrack to every movie she ever watched. Dear Adley, let me start off by saying how much I miss you. When I found out that you weren't going to make it, it broke my heart. There was so much pain. But I knew this was for the best because now you'd be set free from pain in hospitals. I'm really going to miss you. Those warm hugs and that funny laugh of yours. But the thing I'm gonna miss most is my best friend. I'm glad we got 10 years together because those 10 years as a family were so special, I can't even explain. I know that you're happy where you are because there are no doctors or anything to do with hospitals and you're probably eating sushi all the time. <laughs> But if I learned something from you, it's that you only live once, and I'm really glad you're in my life. You're such an inspiration to Kale and I in the whole world. There is not one person that will miss you more than I will, because you are so special to me. You helped me get through tough times. I'm gonna miss your cute dances and that bright smile of yours. I have no idea what I'm gonna do without you, Adley. I have no one to challenge me or play games with anymore, but it's okay. This has been hard on mom and I'm doing my best to just stay strong for the family, but it's really hard. I honestly, I honestly still feel like you're here and you never left. It's going to be a challenge to get used to this, but as long as I have the memory of the world's best little sister, I'll manage. Love, your sister, Mila. Adley was a really wonderful person. I loved how much she loved food. <laughs> and she got me to try sushi for the first time. And every time I eat it, I always think of her. And how much I, I love her. And it's really hard to think that she's not here anymore. I will always miss her laugh and how funny she was and how every time she gave me sass. <laughs> she did not like me. <laughs> Whenever she saw me coming, she would run her hide behind Mila. <laughs> but she loved my sister. <laughs> so in an attempt to get her to like me, <laughs> we did a switch a room and we decided that I would say I was my sister Sophie. <laughs> she did not fall for it. <laughs> she stated, you are not Sophie, and did not fall for it. <laughs> Someone once told me, don't cry because it's over. You have to smile because it happened. We should all smile because we're lucky enough to have Adley in our lives. And try really hard not to cry. 
and her cousins are very sorry they couldn't be here today. So my daughter, Cleo, put her love into the video for her cousin, Abby, and my son asked me to share this. From Valentine, Adley, we love you. You are an inspiration to me more than you know it. When times feel bad, I do the best I can do to put a smile on my face because I saw you smiling all the time. They say smiling is an easy thing to do, but you make it look like there was no reason not to smile. Your smile was so impactful that you would make everyone else around you smile. I remember I started smiling in class after my mom sent me a picture of you smiling. Then my teacher asked me why I was smiling. All I said to her was, Adley. That was the first time a teacher has ever smiled at me. <laughs> he does not love school. <laughs> but I knew I couldn't take the credit for it because it was you, Adley, that made me smile and made her smile. Because of you, Adley, your family, friends, and everyone else that has been around you have better lives. And because of you, your family, friends, and everyone else knows how to truly smile and will never forget how to smile. Every time I smile now, I smile for you because that's how you taught me to live my life no matter what. So everyone smile for Adley because Adley would smile for you. Love Valentine. So like Adley, I share a love for Martin Luther King. We have the same birthday. <laughs> and he also said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? What are you doing for others? Clearly, one of Adley's many gifts was making others laugh and smile. But she also did something else. When I think of Adley next to being funny, the primary quality that comes to mind is curiosity. She asked a lot of key questions. I'm a teacher and Adley has the two qualities that every teacher both loves and struggles with. <laughs> the curious one and the challenging one. And because she's so curious, she asks the best questions, and because she asked such good questions, she could really challenge you. The answers didn't always satisfy, which is a sign of brilliance. A couple Thanksgivings ago, we got to share every Thanksgiving together. And one morning, the kids were all waking up, and one of the kids had, you know, bedhead hair, and Adley looked at her and said, what happened to your hair? <laughs> And she answered, oh, it's just like that in the morning. And that did not satisfy. <laughs> Adley said, no, really, what happened? <laughs> and I was fortunate to meet Adley's fourth grade teacher last week, Miss Castlebur. And so I asked her, what was Adley like in class? And sure enough, Miss Castlebur said, she often asked, do I have to? Do I have to? Like, is this really necessary? <laughs> and once again, the real teacher is Adley. I know we all live lives that are very busy, and in my opinion, we complicate our own lives. And so I cherish Adley's question and reminder, do I really have to? And there's something else that Martin Luther King once said. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. And in Adley's case, maybe you sit on the couch or at the kitchen table and you just make a beautiful impact on the people around you, providing smiles and laughter in beautiful moments. And just like Adley's favorite song states, as the sun comes out, I see a rainbow. An amazing, colorful rainbow is how I see Adley. And as we know, when the lights go out and it's dark, we get to see the stars. So for me, 
my precious niece, Abby is our rainbow to the stars. And she will continue to shine bright in all our lives. So when you see a rainbow or you see the stars, just think of Adley and know that she's shining a light for all of us and particularly lighting the way for Mila, Kale, and her mommy. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Mima and I met Adley and her beautiful family back in 2013 when I became Adley's old pair. But before everything, I would like to say that I always used to tell my parents that I always wanted to have a sister, and I ended up having a brother. But then, <laughs> when I came here, my old Missy, I'm sorry guys, Mila and Kale became my little sisters that I always wanted. However, that year that I spent with Adley was something I will never be able to forget. And she, she and I had such a great connection that I can't really, I can't put it into words. And I would like to say thank you, Misse, for teaching me what life really is, how health really matters. And there is a song, it's called Dust in the Wind. I don't know if you guys, anybody knows, probably do. <laughs> The band that sings it it's Kansas and the song the song starts like this. I close my eyes only for a moment and the moment's gone. So thank you, Missy, for teaching me how to appreciate every moment of my life. And thank you for being in my life. And I would like to say uh, two funny stories. Um, the first one was when the very first year when I when I met the family, we were having a we were having a dinner at that very unique round table of Paige's house. <laughs> Don't ever give away the table, please. <laughs> Adi was the last one to come to the table and she was like all the spunkiness and she was like super tiny back then and she goes all right, I'm gonna pull myself to the table. And she pulls the chair <laughs> towards the table, but the chair kind of shaped back and forth. And she goes, she puts her hands like this. Like, Who just moved the table? <laughs> <laughs> this day, I can actually remember it like it was yesterday. I will always remember this, always and forever. And then the second funny story, it was, Right when she was, um, she was in a hospital, she was getting her voice back from the chemotherapy, and we were just texting, I was asking her, how are you doing? And she, she texted me that she was very well, and I wanted to see her, so I, did, I recorded myself, I took a video of myself saying, hey, let me say, please take a video of yourself, I wanna make sure you're really, you're really doing good. And I said, and I'm sorry that I'm looking this messy, but I'm a little cuckoo. I've been drinking last night a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, she takes a video, and she's like, oh. And she, she barely had voice, so she was kind of whispering, but all that misery that she's been going through, she, she was like, she goes, Oh, well, that reminds me of the song. I've been thinking too much, but instead, I've been drinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> so in all that craziness that she's been going through, she always found a way to smile, and she's been carrying all that as it was normal, as it was such a normal thing to have to deal with everything she did. And I hope the message is clear to everyone. So yeah, oh, and one thing. She was crazy about Lion King and she was so excited to see the new movie. So I promised her I will watch it for her. And if any of you watches it, please think of her. Thank you. Hello. Um, hi. Well, 
I never really were, like, I'd say really close to Adelaide. I was more close to her sister, um, Mila, and, and you know, you know how Paige mentioned when they went on a trip and they had to sleep really close and all that? Well, when they finally arrived, or, like, I was really excited to see them because I'd been waiting for them to come for a while. So a few days, like, I don't remember if it was, like, that night or a few days later, maybe the next day, we decided to have a little bit of, like, a s'mores thing because my grandparents have this, um, where you can make s'mores. And they would always play music because that's what, really what my family always did. And when a song came up, I think some of you may have heard of it. It's, um, peanut butter, peanut butter jelly time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we kept, like, Adley couldn't stop dancing. <laughs> And we just kept playing it over and over and over, and she just could, did, never got sick of it. She just kept dancing and dancing and dancing, and she didn't care about if she never like didn't make as many s'mores as all of us. She just wanted to keep dancing. <laughs> it was I noticed how really, it was kind of hard to get her to stop. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she could have kept dancing for like ever. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure if Ali was here and was saying something to this mic, she would say something really sassy. <laughs> but um. I'm gonna miss her. Nobody really had that much of a spirit, or wasn't afraid to dance in front of a crowd. And I don't. I'm gonna miss her. Adley, I can see you, and I hear you <laughs> somewhere over the rainbow. And I'm not Judy Garland, so I can't do it right. <laughs> but. I have to say that, and I think you'll find this true, with most people you know, and that you know and love and regard, that there's a moment that pops into your mind when you think of that person, and you may have lived with them for 50 years, but there was a single moment that was an open. And my single moment with Adley spanned two generations. But I'm going to start with you, Adley. One time you and your two sisters and your mom came down to visit us in Long Beach. And I knew you were getting close because you texted me. So I stood and lived on a corner, live on a corner, and I stood there and waited and watched the car pull up. The SUV door slid open, and out jumps Kate. And she comes running and runs down the sidewalk, around the corner, and up the front walkway. And I open the door and get a big hug. And that felt wonderful. And then I see Mila jumping out of the van and coming up around the corner and coming up. And she jumped up and gave me a big kiss. And that felt wonderful. And I'll always remember that. One I'll never forget. Here is this smiling little blonde jumps out of the car she runs around and she's got this beautiful face with a big grin and brown eyes and she jumps up gives me a hug and right then and there she reminded me of going back to 1970 when her grandmother Carol and I were on a trip to Texas and we only had two kids then. Courtney wasn't there yet. <laughs> and we had stopped in Utah. We were in a pool. It was late at night and here comes Adley, your mother, she came running out, and I'm in the pool, and she runs out, and with no second thought, with the biggest smile identical to yours, and jumps into my arms and laughs. 
and that's my memory of Paige that comes like that. And that's my memory of Atlee that comes like that. And Carol, the first time I met you was a memory I'll never forget to. <laughs> I was working in a <laughs> way back. Cover your ears. <laughs> yes, cover your ears. I was working way back in uh, the days of almost pre-computers and working in a computer room. And in wanders this young, attractive woman, dressed beautifully, and she said, "I'm new here. I'm." work in the mail room and I'm looking for so and so. And I thought, what a beautiful woman. And I still do. Anyway, I just, Adley, I know, you've heard enough. <laughs> you're tired of all this. You want your sushi. So you're gonna get it very soon. Bye, sweetheart. I appreciate all that you've done here. What have I done? <laughs> you, you've just worked with a crazy family and Elton. <laughs> but I mostly also want to say how much I appreciate Mark and how much he's done. Um, I have Adley for um, Mark and since kindergarten, and she's always been a wonderful friend. Um, Whenever I look or think about something that Abby loved, I would always think about her. And um, when I was making slime one day, since Abby loved that, uh, I just um, thought about how much Abby was. I love slime and how much and how great she was a friend and that um sorry and that she was just a great friend and I loved her so much. I really love Adley a lot and it's really hard to think that she's gone now. But one thing I'll always remember is her laughing smile. But every time I visited her at the hospital, I had all these friends around me, and sometimes I felt really bad for her because I feel like I couldn't do anything for her to make her feel better. But the thing that really made her feel better is when I was there with her laughing. Every time I feel like I'm doing something hard, I'm always going to think about Ashley. Because she always did everything hard, and she did it with a smile on her face. I never got to use this excuse as a kid, but my dog ate my homework, so bear with me. i got to start out by thanking everyone for being here. There's so much your Grandpa shared in her, being precise and <laughs> timing everything. She'd bitch about the pills weren't the right ones, and we'd count and realize she was right. So, Grandpa, good job. <laughs> My favorite thing was cooking for her. Um, we'd sit down, five of us at the dinner table, homemade enchiladas or salmon, barbecue, steaks, lamb chops, and nothing made that kid happier than eating. <laughs> and I know it's a common denominator we've been talking about, but sushi was the incredible. I've never seen an adult, let alone a seven-year-old, eat that much sushi. It's incredible. And, uh, God, I'm sorry, the dog really did eat my homework. <laughs> One of my favorite memories of her was a week before she died, Paige and I bought five pounds of mussels. And we made half of them spicy, the other half regular split them up, and Adley ate her half <laughs> non-spicy before Paige and I could finish sharing the spicy ones. She pushed herself back, and crossed her legs, put her hands over her tummy, and went, damn, that was good. <laughs> <laughs>
and probably my favorite thing with her was throwing her in the pool. She just loved when I would throw her as far as I could in the deep end. And she'd have that great belly laugh that she, you mentioned. Her, her laugh was amazing. And I would just throw her and throw her and throw her and finally I couldn't do it anymore. I don't know how you carried her everywhere. <laughs> But my favorite thing about her was her confidence and her attitude. One of her favorite nurses, out of stealing from Heather, called her sassy pants. And it's absolutely perfect. She wouldn't take crap from anybody. She'd say anything to anyone, anywhere. She'd belt out a song, the lyrics, in the middle of nowhere, anytime, and just she just knew how, to, she didn't take crap from anybody. That, that was my favorite thing about that kid. So I, I could go on and on, but I hope we all just miss her so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lynn's daughter, childhood friend of Paige's. I recently moved up to Sacramento and I'm so excited to have a home away from home with Paige. Because when I think of moms, I think of someone who would move mountains for their children. And if my mom moves mountains for me, Paige is someone that moves continents or even <laughs> worlds or entire universes for all of her children. So I'm very happy to have a pseudo mom real close by. <laughs> um, when I moved up here early June, late May, I was able to visit Adley in the hospital. And I've been babysitting children since I was a child. And I don't think I've ever had that much fun with a 10-year-old, even when I was a 10-year-old. <laughs> um, somehow, <laughs> um, we brought Adley some McDonald's because she wanted McDonald's but wasn't satiated, her palate. <laughs> so she ended up getting pesto chicken, you know, along with it. But at some point in hanging out, Layla, Tristan, and I ended up on the floor. <laughs> playing with toys, like putting the back and forth, rolling things on the ground, and me as a 21-year-old never had so much fun, just like one shoe on, on the floor, making obstacle courses, and just Adley was so entertained. <laughs> but yeah, when, when I heard Adley pass, my first thought was just Layla, because I know how much they meant to each other, and you, you couldn't ever find someone that was like, they're just soulmates, you know? And uh, I hope to have a friend as, as nice as Layla one day and as nice as Adley. But yeah, Adley really meant a lot and her family really means a lot to me because that's, that's what a family looks like. Hi. So she left that night and then I came over the next day and I hung out with Adley in the hospital for I think it was five hours. And at first I was like, okay, like I don't know if I want to hang out in a hospital for five hours, but she's so fun and so cool, like so much cooler than me. <laughs> and so before we came by, my mom stopped and had me um, run into a Japanese restaurant and pick up a bunch of sushi for her. Um, because, I mean, I know it's a theme, but I mean, she really was into it. And so I, I went in and I ordered all these things and I wasn't sure if she was going to like them and I didn't want them to go to waste because I wasn't going to eat it because I'm a really picky eater. Like, And so I showed up and she loved it, of course, even though it was tofu and I wasn't sure if she was going to be into it, but she just went right ahead and ate all of it. And then my mom uh, let it slip that I didn't like sushi and let it slip that I was a picky eater. And she was so scandalized. <laughs> and she was making so much fun of me. She roasted me and I was like, you're right. I was there with my chicken tenders and fries and she was eating sushi and like with her soy sauce. And she had a whole buffet when my mom was visiting. And I don't know, I just felt like she was such an adult and I felt like the kid <laughs> and I was like, Wow, who knew that a 10-year-old girl was so much cooler than me? And so, I don't know. I was, just, I was a little embarrassing, but it's fine. <laughs> and Paige and I have been friends since she was super eight, I guess. <laughs> same soccer team, same softball team, et cetera. Um, I don't have that much to add because everybody, obviously, has been saying the same things. Um, I did get to know Ann Lee, luckily, at three different stages of her life, and so that felt nice to me to kind of 
I felt like I knew more about her than just her being sick. Um, so we came up, the girls and I and my son came up to San Francisco and we went to Pier 39 in this like pirate boat with the kids and had a great day one day. And it's funny because my kids had not hung around smaller kids in, ever, I guess. Um, and Adley was such a giggle box. And she, we were in Paige's car and they had her going, because my kids are super silly, they had her going, she was laughing so hard, we were actually worried she was gonna throw up. <laughs> um, and she kept screaming, like this high pitched, super infectious laugh and this giggle that like was literally ear piercing. And I remember one of my kids covering their ears and being like, oh, what is she doing? I was like, this is how happy children are. This is what they sound like. This is what you guys were like when you're little. Sorry, <laughs> suck it up. <laughs> this is what we dealt with when you were little. Um, and it was kind of funny. So they had this memory of her and you know, we went out to dinner and of course she loves to eat. We went to a seafood place because that's what she loves. Um, and then it came back in January uh, when she you know, had just had a very big procedure and was kind of bummed or whatever. But I luckily got to drive Layla in and we went to visit her. So I always got to see the best badly because when she was with Layla, she had so much fun and she came out of her shell and even if they weren't talking, she had a smile on her face and that was really lovely. Um, and then the last time I came back, like they said, you know, my kids were entertaining her, playing on the floor, and she especially came out of her shell with Tristan the next day. Tristan was showing her the webkins, and like that's kind of the old school, I guess, <laughs> um, uh, video game. And it was all new to Adley, so she was super jazzed. And luckily, my daughter had, you know, all these points, and she could buy stuff and go shopping and do all this cool stuff. So it was really nice to see her just being a kid and being silly. Um, and uh, I guess I feel good that. One of her last meals was <laughs> fit for a queen, right, Paige? <laughs> we completely took over the hospital room with like two different kinds of muscles and, you know, the, the frites that go with them. And she loved smoked salmon because that was one of the things she could have. So we had smoked salmon crepes and we had all these like fancy desserts. And it was the most ridiculous uh, hospital feast I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, but she took a lot of joy in that, and that made me feel nice that I could see her smile so much. Now, I was just thinking as everybody was talking here, particularly uh, these girls, well, by the time I was 10 years old, I don't think anybody could have ever told any stories about me at all. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very boring life because I just don't remember any of that. But Adley, she has touched all of us with her memories, and we'll never forget her. We never will, we can't. She'll be there in our lives forever. And I'm just so glad that Adley is no longer in pain and suffering like she was when we saw her so many times. She doesn't hurt now. She's. I feel like she's very happy. And I'm glad to hear that or to see that. So that said, we'd like all of you to come out to the patio area now. There's uh, some food and drinks out there and let's just socialize and talk with one another and enjoy the day to remember our dear little Adley.
you Where 